All right, folks. Well, welcome to the channel, and you're here for part two of how to make macro or taco macaroni and cheese. So this is kind of, as far as I know, is my own invention, but I'm sure somebody out there has tried it before. Virtually everything in cooking has been done before. You're probably not going to invent anything. You might change up the recipe to something, as I do all the time. In fact. My taco seasoning recipe came from cooks.com and I'm going to link that down here below. Now I'm going to omit a couple things like the onion powder and the garlic powder. That's because I'm going to use fresh onion and fresh garlic into my ground beef mixture as I'm cooking it here. And so for that reason I have left those out of the, of the taco seasoning mix that I took from cooks.com. I use it all the time. In fact, if you saw my video on how to make jalapeno jelly, the basic recipe came from cooks.com. I did change things up just a little bit, and but that's where the basis come from. And I highly recommend it. If you want to go there, just type in what you're looking for, and it'll probably bring up a quite a long list of what you're looking for and Something to take in mind, keep in mind is that down below, oftentimes people who have made that recipe will leave their opinions or maybe a tip on how to improve it, something like that. And that's where the taco seasoning came from. Now, I went ahead in part one, I've made my macaroni and cheese. And so I've got it over here, here in just a minute, I'm going to stick it in the oven and get it out of my way for now. And then uh, what we're primarily going to work on to start is going to be getting our ground beef mixture cooked and and ready to go on top of the macaroni and cheese. Alright, so let's get turned around folks. And again, this is dedicated to my daughter who is a big macaroni and cheese fan. And so, uh, Brianna, this one's for you. Let's get turned around folks. Let's go. So I've put my macaroni and cheese into a 9 by 13 casserole dish. I'm pretty sure it has 9 by 13. It is. And so I'm going to move that into the oven just to get it out of the way for now. Now the next thing we are going to use or get into is our seasoning mix. Again I'll leave a link to this down below. And that's one tablespoon of chili powder. And it calls for two teaspoons, that was tablespoons, that's a big one, of the chili powder. It calls for two teaspoons of onion powder. However, we're going to use fresh onion. It calls for one teaspoon of garlic. I'm going to use two cloves of garlic. It calls for one teaspoon each. Ground cumin, paprika, powdered, powdered oregano, and sugar. Now I omitted the sugar. Oh, and one teaspoon of salt. I will taste it. I just have a. I just don't usually add sugar to my to my cooking. That's me. Anyway, I also have one great big jalapeno there. Now, and I want to go ahead. I'm going to move that jalapeno out of my way. I've already gone ahead and peeled these garlic. I'm trying to chop garlic with this glove on might be a little trying here. It kind of gets in the way. When I drag my fingertip back, the um, glove kind of wants to drag out away from my fingertip and ends up being up underneath where the blade wants to come down at. Plus you just don't have that tactile or the feeling. I'm going to give that a, a little bit of a dice here. I don't want it. It doesn't need to be super thin, super fine. 
had a, in a song somewhere. Good enough. I'm going to go ahead and dice this onion up. Doesn't have to be very fine either. I'm not going to make it what I call really chunky, but... And we'll get turned around and taken over here to our skillet. Alright, so I've roughly broken up my hamburger here. This is 80-20, meaning 80% lean meat and 20% fat. And we're going to begin browning this meat. Got this over medium heat right now. Alright, we're about halfway brown now. I'm going to go ahead and add in my spices. My onions and garlic. And I got a can of tomato paste here. And I'm going to take a healthy a healthy tablespoon of tomato paste and put in here. And I got a quarter cup of water. That's going to help me to spread my spices as well as liquefy this tomato paste a bit. Now this is not going to thicken up with, on you like the typical packaged uh, sauce of, I should say, seasoning mix as you would find in your grocery. And the reason being is because it doesn't have any starch in it. That was also the reason I did not add as much water as it normally tells you to add in one of those mixes. Okay, I'm going to turn my heat down to low now and just kind of let that simmer for a few minutes. Very low actually. I want to cook out that water and kind of soften our vegetables just a little bit. Now while that continues to simmer a bit, we're going to get turned around and we got some more toppings to go with this and we need to get those prepared. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up this jalapeno pepper. And this is a massive jalapeno pepper. I don't know where Aldi's got these at, but Aldi's being the grocery store that I bought it at. So Aldi's, there's your plug for the night. Okay, we're going to put that in one of those little bowls. Give this meat another stir. Now I've got us some green peppers here. That one, that one leaf on the leaflet, whatever you want to call it on there. It looks like it needed to come out. Another one. Cut the tops off. Discard. Slice this very thinly. I'm going to turn the heat off on my meat over there. I don't want to overcook it. Here in a moment we'll drain that. I'm making quite the mess here. Okay, time to get my meat drained. Okay, so we're going to come in with our drain mat, uh, drain hamburger mix. We're going to Spread this over the top of our macaroni and cheese. Now we're going to top that with lettuce. And I cut up the whole head simply because I didn't know exactly how much it was going to take. But I've got plenty of lettuce here. Enough left over for a little salad. Now then, some green pepper. Some of this jalapeno. Of course you can skip the jalapeno if you don't like spicy foods. But if you watched any of my videos, you know I am a hothead. Now let's come in with a little bit of our shredded cheese. We can never have too much cheese. And this is Cheddar Jack cheese. Now I've got myself a couple of tomatoes here. I actually bought these several days ago. I when you get in the winter time, you always want to try to find uh, tomatoes on the vine. 
And these have had a chance to kind of ripen a little bit sitting out here on my countertop. Now I'm going to start by quartering these. Kind of like that. I'm going to cut the meat out of them. Simply because I don't want a really juicy mess going on here. Now I was not using any pressure. I know I had my fingers out in front of the blade there. But I was using virtually no pressure to cut through this tomato. We're going to dice this tomato. I'm going to begin moving some of this tomato. Got plenty more to come, so no point in being stingy with it. Now then. How about that, folks? It's looking pretty good, isn't it? One for the camera. Okay, folks. It's time. I think the way to do this might be with a spatula. There you go folks, taco mac and cheese, maybe taco mac and cheese salad. Folks, let's get turned around. All right, folks, well, if you've ever made tacos at home, really the only additional step to doing this would be to, if you want to make your own spice, your own uh, taco seasoning, or, and if you want to make the mac and cheese. That would be really the only additional steps to making tacos. So let's give this a try. Try to get a good mix of everything. Some meat, some mac and cheese, vegetables. Hmm. Well, over a taco, taco flavoring is right on. The one thing I'd say it's missing is kind of that crunch. Well, 
nice and cheesy. That's right on. If I just had a couple tortilla chips over here on the side, I think this would be perfect. Nice seasoning on that meat. Mm -hmm. As much as I like to, I'm not going to sit here and eat the whole plate in front of you. Folks, do me a favor. Down here in the bottom right hand corner. Hit like and subscribe if you're seeing something you like. And do me a favor. Stay tuned because there's always more to come. And thanks for watching.